Hello there. Welcome back to Thriving Generation with Dr. G. It's another exciting day and a good day to thrive. Today I have with me a thriving sister. I am so excited to have Dr. G. Hei Kwan with us. She is doing very well in her area. She has come very far in her career and I think it's a good day for us to learn from her. Dr. Kwan, Good. welcome to Thriving Generation. Thank you, Dr. G. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Could you please introduce yourself to the Thriving Generation, giving us a little bit about your background? Sure. So my name is Chihe Kwan. I work at the University of Southern California in, uh, in Los Angeles. Um, I work as a associate director for survey research at USC Race and Equity Center. So in our center, I work with other analysts uh, regarding survey development and creating survey report and analyzing survey data. Mm. And there are also a few different research projects that I'm working on. So a few times in a year, we go to conference and present our survey result uh, based on data analysis. And we also do some focus group and case study uh, to learn more about how our client utilize our data. The mm-hmm. client meaning higher education institution because they are the one who are participating in our survey. Mm -hmm. Uh, And our survey is about race and equity issues. So those are the brief introduction about me and what I'm doing at USC. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. And thank you for coming. I mean, we appreciate you. Dr. Kwan, I want us to talk about your career journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. You are currently in the United States working as an associate director of a program like a prestigious investor like yours. Can you share with us how you started? And did you always have this ambition to become who you are today? Um, So I started, I will say, I came to United States 2013 to pursue my doctoral degree uh, in Indiana University. That's where I met Dr. G. (laughs) We became a friend. (laughs) I remember that we went to a woman's conference in the university. And then there was a really sad story about a girl in Indiana. And then we cried together. And then she had me a tissue. (laughs) I was crying. And we became somehow good friends. So... Uh, anyway, we were both doctoral students at the time, and I was interested in pursuing my career in the field of higher education. So I decided to um, go abroad. Uh, the reason why I chose to come to the United States is that there are so many um, sort of well-known scholars in my field, particularly. So I wanted to learn from them and work with them. So that's why. And while I was in Indiana Bloomington, I was working as a research assistant at the research center. And there I worked with the director of the center uh, on various different research projects. So it was really helpful for me to learn how faculty members do their research and what kind of project I can get involved as a doctoral student who do not have many experiences yet. Um, I was focusing time, I was focusing the field of financial aid that mm-hmm. includes like student debt issue, how much debt like currently U.S. college student has, what kind of like related issue, what kind of solution we can provide, things like that. So I was working on those area as my academic interest. 
And then there are a few different area that I was also working on, also based on what um, faculty members' research interests. So mm. I will say was diverse. So I consider myself as a not necessarily a typical scholar who are who is usually focusing on one field and mm. they becoming an expert on that field, like very advanced level. But to me, uh, I'm interested in higher education in general. So whenever I get those collaboration sort of request, then I usually say yes. Mm. So there are so many fields that I've been working on that include uh, general education for college kids and admission policies and STEM education and college peer education and diversity and equity issues. So there are so many things and I like in that way. Um, and then for my career, maybe in my third or fourth year, I was thinking about what I really want to be. And I knew that I wasn't very interested in becoming a faculty member. Mm. I was considering myself more like a practitioner and researcher, not necessarily just typical scholar focusing right. on a particular area for their like long time, if not the entire their lifetime. So I decided to become a data analysis working at university because I love to work at university. So oh. I got a job in the uni uh, Northern Kentucky University as an institutional research analyst. Okay. Uh, there I work with many different analysts and my main role was assisting the Division of Student Affairs. So okay. there are a lot of different services you need that include Greek life support services, Black African American student initiative, Latino student support, and also support for um, sexual violence and domestic mm -hmm. violence survivor, things like that. So whenever they need some survey or they need some data analysis, they need a report, I'm the one who provides those assistance. Okay. So it was very um, beneficial for me because I was able to learn so many different services across the division. Uh, and I was able to have a chance to work with different student affairs professionals, which I haven't um have any chance to work with them before I start that position. So mm. I worked there about three years and after two and a half year, I felt like I was fully adjusted. And even though I liked my job, I wanted more something new and also I want more growth in my career. Um, and I was one, I wanted to focus more on race and equity issue, particularly. So the diversity equity issue is a very critical issue. And I was able to do some of it because only because I expressed my interest to my supervisors, like director of institutional research. And so what I did was that providing like training to our department, even though I wasn't necessarily expert, but I was interested in, and we, that way we can have more conversation about diversity and equity issue, what we need to do as a data analysis in a university. So that's why I decided to apply a new job that is more close to diversity issue. Mm. And I was interested in going to a sort of larger university and larger city because uh, I think that way I can have more diverse experiences. Okay. So uh, I found this, my current position at University of Southern California and race and equity issue. As name indicate, we are focusing race and equity issues. So um, that's how I uh, became the Associate Director of Survey Research here. And there was a summary of the, my journey from my doctoral program to my current position. 
That is great. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, people get into doctoral program and they think their only option is to become a faculty member in an institution. But it's nice to know that you decided to go a different route and you're enjoying your position. Can you yeah. share with us some of the challenges you've encountered so far mm -hmm. in terms of going this career path? And then, of course, when you are there, you can talk about the success as well. Sure. Uh, the challenge is, is that maybe it's related to my myself, maybe my confidence level, and mm -hmm. that includes language and cultural differences. Okay. I think anybody who are from other countries staying in the U.S. probably have some barrier, language and culture. So I feel like in, when I was a doctoral student, most of the time, I always think that my English is not good enough. Okay. And I don't know so many things about U.S., even though after I, even though I lived there like four or five, six years, I still feel like there are so many things I don't know. Uh, so that's why um, it's kind of hard to have a lot of conversation with American people. Um, I think, I think that's actually, um, that's kind of true, but I think my confidence, my insecurity is more bigger issue because okay. if I were more confident, I really didn't think too much about what I don't have. I probably mm -hmm. focusing on what I already have, what I can offer as an international student who have a different background yes. and my English, it's good enough to dissertation and <laughs> we can hear everything <laughs> <laughs> doctoral degree so yeah and that's something that something i should uh deal with uh i think I cr i'm still working on it because i do think my english is really it's good it's been like progressing so well over the last eight years um but still, sometimes I feel insecure. I feel insecure when I have a conversation with it just randomly pops up. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that I had. And what I did to overcome that is that commit some time to advance my English. So I still work with a tutor that I hire for my writing and when I have a presentation, when I have something important meeting, I try to spend time in advance to practice okay. that so that I'm more comfortable, confident, okay. and more accurate um, when I have those important meetings. So those are the one challenges and other challenges after I became a professional in a university is that, um, Maybe it can be like being different uh, because the university, uh, the Northern Kentucky University is predominantly white institution. And that, oh, that includes both student, faculty, staff, not just student. So hmm. it can be quite lonely working at where my colleagues are mostly white and okay. most of them are from Kentucky, Ohio, nearby. So they kind of spend their entire life there while I was only staying there two to three years. So feel like I'm kind of, they are very nice people, but still there are some loneliness and yeah. feeling different. And it's kind of, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit introvert. So it's kind of hard to reach out to them like before they initiate conversation. So those are the challenges for uh, me as an international staff and also woman of color. Um, yeah, I think those are the challenges that likely to have uh, not just, maybe not the, in the past, maybe kind of partially currently as well. Uh, yeah. While I have a good friend at work, but still there's loneliness or feeling different uh, because I'm from different countries. So those are the main challenges that I think I have experienced so far. 
That's good to know. It's, it's, I'm, I'm pretty sure others could be able to relate to this. You are not alone in that boat. Feeling different is a big thing. But what are some of the successes that you've enjoyed mm. as being an international scholar and now a professional? Mm-hmm. Uh, the success, um, what I learned about um, being successful is that as far as I make effort, meaning I commit certain time and I get things done, then I'll be successful. So yeah. that's a big important lesson. And I think that's related to diligence, like how consistency, like how much time you can devote maybe every single day. Like even if that's 30 minute, one hour, mm. that's a lot of time if you compile that in a one year. And also taking an action, like not just thinking about it, taking an action. Like Dr. G decided to have uh, her own YouTube channel and upload video almost once a week. That's a big commitment. Mm. It doesn't look like it, but it's a lot of commitment. Like um, asking people to join and uh, editing video, things like that. So I think that's the key. So in that regard, um, I feel like um, when there's something I want to do, but when it's not my responsibility. And it's a little hard to ask, but I still, I was also hesitant, but like, I always ask to my supervisor whether I can do this. I can spend more time on this particular area. And I think the one of them is the, like I said before, it's about diversity and equity thing. So yeah. that's not something I, in my responsibility per se, but I talk about that maybe a year or more to my supervisors. And they were usually supportive, but since we don't have a structure, uh, it's not, it's kind of depending on me. Like I should be the one who suggests a structure system, also creating everything from the scratch. Mm. So when I did those um, DEI training with my colleague for our department, I felt really proud because that's probably the first time ever our department have a convert like really deep and honest conversation about diversity, race okay. equity issues. So and then after little after that, I applied this job and I was able to share what I've done there to our center. And of course they really, really like that story that I, mm. I'm the one initiated that work, even though it's not required. And I successfully complete the training for our, our colleagues. So I think that is, those are the one example that if there's something we want, we should ask either for help or authority or whatever permission, whatever that is, and then just do it. Um, it's probably not perfect. Uh, but there's always thing we can do regarding yeah. our interests. So if you don't have a time, you can do it after work or you can spend like every one hour per week for your maybe second job, whatever mm-hmm. that is. So um, those are the way to sort of see a success uh, uh, for regarding what you want. Uh, and then one last thing can be as a researcher working in university. Um, I been uh, I have been trying to go to a lot of conferences, uh, including presentations. So I feel like so far maybe I have between fifteen to twenty different presentations based on my research, okay. and I also have a I also was able to have published five different journal articles uh, based on my research project. And those are not necessarily required my sort of professional because I'm not a faculty, yeah. but I'm very interested in. So 
that really, really helpful for my job career. So those are the things is are not required, but if you want to do a be a research analyst or research position, that would be really, really beneficial for you to um, get a career you want. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it goes right into my next question, which was going to be advice for people. So I don't know if there is anything you would like to add for people mm. seeking to explore in the United States, people who are seeking to thrive in their careers. You've said so many things already. Is there anything else you want to add? Mm. I will say that mm, one thing I can tell is that when I was a doctoral student, I was focusing uh like interest topic, something I can something can be marketable, not necessarily what I want. So marketable meaning something that I can get a job easily. Okay. So that's why I became doing research on financial aid. But because I don't have a high motivation interest, it was a little hard because sometimes I need to force myself to do a research. And that's never fun. So I feel like it's so beneficial for me to spend time to think about what you really want, okay. what you really can motivate it. Okay. Because no matter what topic you will be work, working on, there's always group community people who wants to work with you. There's always an opportunity. It doesn't have to be a like very trendy, hot topic. Uh, I wish I was knew at that time so that I can just spend my doctoral program journey more fun. Because <laughs> uh, sometimes it was a little hard to yeah. write. Sometimes I feel like I hate writing. Uh, but now I'm focusing on more things that I really like or I feel more passionate because I really want to contribute more diverse um, higher education so that I don't have those resistance regarding writing and working on that. So those are the my one advice. That's amazing. Thank you so much. It's been a great time. I appreciate you. We appreciate your time. And we are cheering you on in your career, in all your endeavors. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Kwan. Thank you, Dr. G. So Thriving Generation, we heard from Dr. Kwan. She's giving us some tips how we can thrive in other areas aside um, being a faculty in an institution. So do you have questions for her? Please put that in the comments below. I will also put some links to how you can view some of her research works and follow her and see what she's doing around as well. So please, if you have any questions, leave them here. If you have comments, leave them here. If you enjoyed our video, please like them and share with others as well. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.